Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage 2024 World Tour of Model Kits video. Well here we are back in Japan and today we are looking at a great model kit by Aoshima. Now I'm not going to show it to you right away, I'm going to leave you guessing. See if you can guess what it is. Oh yes, it's the title of the video. Okay, never mind. Here it is. This is the Nissan Silvia from 1966. This is the CSP 311. So again, a really cool car. Now what's really interesting is if you take a look at this picture, you of course see the like side view showroom version, which I think is supposed to be some kind of green color. But up here in the black and white photo, this is a police cruiser that they used back in Japan. Now this is a two door, so it would have been like a high speed chase car sort of thing but they give you the police option in this as well plus some really cool pieces that are molded in transparent red that i was actually surprised seeing when i opened up the lid on this thing so off screen of course so now i want to share that journey with you so let's go down to my bench and pull the lid off this thing and see what's in the box the first generation Sylvia was announced at the 1964 tokyo motor show as the datsun coupe 1500 and was released in April 1965. With its beautiful styling and its long nose and short deck, as well as the sharp body lines, the car was dubbed as Crisp Cut. Also with excellent power performance, it was deployed to the Kanagawa Prefectural Police Trafficking Unit for the opening of the 3rd Kinhin Road on December 18, 1965. Media of the time covered the model as Japan's first highway patrol car which provided the safety on the 3rd Kihin Road. This kit replicates the CSP311 model Sylvia. The kit is selectable between normal catalog specification and police car specification and you can assemble the CSP311 Sylvia to your preference. On this side of the box we get a front three-quarter view of the car as well as the rear view quarter of the car just for reference so that we know how to build our model. And on the opposite side of the box we have some of the tools and the paint color callouts that you will need to build this kit. Now let's lift the lid off the box and see what's inside. A little bit sticky in the one corner there. Okay, check this thing out! So look at all this nice red plastic here for our police version of the kit. You also get these wonderful red transparent traffic cones, which are really cool. Here's our body, nice in a little bag with a little bit to remove in the center pillar. Here we have our chrome plated parts, not too much on this, but enough to get the job done. Here we have the black plastic components, again some really cool stuff. Now there is no engine in this kit. So it is easy to build right out of the box, just as it is. We also have the glass here. I know the plastic is making a lot of noise, but there it is. And we have our tires. I always like these because they're really squishy rubber, as you can tell. All right, anyway, we have our decal sheet, and that is looking pretty decent. And our instructions. So let's just clear all this stuff out of the way, take a look at the instructions, and begin our investigation of this kit. Here we have the front page for our Sylvia instruction sheet, and as you can see it is quite a big one, so I've had to rotate the camera around just so we can get this all in frame. Here we have the important information concerning this model kit, and that of course is, you know, read the instructions and all that kind of thing. And we also have it up here in Japanese. Here we have the schematic view of our entire car, and there are some callouts in here for the police package, but this is your standard driving car, and what we have is the top view, as well as decal placements all along here for the little emblems, it's side view, front and back profiles. Now if you need to chase down Toyota 2000 GTs, you can easily do that right here in your Nissan. And this is a nice blueprinted picture of the police version of this kit. And here we see the police decals being put on the side, the two-tone paint job, and the callouts up here. 
as well as here is all the instructions on how to lay out your decals. So we've got the top view with the police siren there. And it almost looks like it's off center, actually. If we line that up. Wonder, do I have a ruler available? Popsicle stick. Okay, so there's the trunk lid and the hood emblem, and you can see that the circle is just off center. So keep that in mind when you're attaching that dome light, that it is not in the center, it's just a bit off. Anyway, there's the side view, front profile and rear profile, showing all the police markings and everything else you need to chase down the high performance cars in Japan. At the end of our instruction sheet is a complete listing of all the parts that are included in this kit, as well as the parts you will not be using. Now, unfortunately, you won't be using the traffic cones and whatever these are, but they are still included in the kit. And you know what? I'm just going to use traffic cones anyway. I don't care what they say. <laughs> what are you going to do? Arrest me? No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so there's all our parts trees. So if you're missing any of these, there are places where you can contact Aoshima and get replacement parts. Now, as far as building the model goes, again, this is one of those kits that used to be a battery-powered car with an electric motor and a gear powering the rear wheels. Now, Aoshima has removed that feature, but I think you can still find these motors and gears if you really want to do that. But overall, that's what makes this kit so simple, is it's just meant to be a display model that you can also run around on your carpet and play with with the kids or if you're a kid and so what we have is the simplistic one-piece tire and wheel combination going into the tire and then here we have the axle shaft and there's a plastic collar that goes on here and that would take up the space of the gear and on the other side we have a little bearing and these would just go in and pinch together and here it shows the uh, hammer and you're hammering in the axle it says drive it lightly so just light taps just to bring it in don't like do a full swing as if you're gonna be working on a construction site and you're hammering uh, nails into a wall <laughs> you know because you'll punch the axle right through the bottom so just go very slowly and make sure you're ver perfectly vertical up and down what i find is if you have a drill press put the axle in the drill press and then press it into the wheel and it should be perfectly even. It says when you drive the shaft set the wheel on a hard place or a wooden block usually works. Step two shows the front of the vehicle going on and we have a specified left and right hand side so please pay attention to that as you are putting the model together. So again we've got the two-piece front wheel and tire and that goes into our kingpin and uh, front suspension arrangement. And then we've got a rivet in the back, which again, you would drift in with a hammer and get that all together. Same with on the right hand side. And like it says here, drive it lightly. They show it. So you've got your rivet, your kingpin here, and then the wheel. And then it goes in here and the lower A arms in this assembly here, they should have a little sort of a fin in here and that would line up with the tie rod and lock it in place. And when you turn the wheels, it should go click, click, click and lock them in place into that steering position. So basically you've got the bottom of the king pin or the top, I guess, going into this collar and then another one going into the bottom of the A arms and this whole assembly going down. Now this little box here would be where the battery would have sat in the electric vehicle for the motor. Step three of our instructions is showing the completed chassis. And here we have our exhaust pipe going in, the little tail pipe there, and the crossover pipe from the engine into the exhaust. And the exhaust is molded to the chassis pan. And then we have this cross member going in here, which would shore up the entire frame. We also have some paint color callouts for the chassis as well. Panel four shows the interior going together. And this is where more of the meat and potatoes of the car come in. Oh, this car is a two seater, which is really interesting. I thought it was a four seater. Anyway, 
We have, now I got my daughter to translate this with her phone. She's got a translator on the phone, which is cool. This is a police option. And we also have our standard radio going in here. We've got our dashboard and this is a right-hand drive car as opposed to the left-hand because that's how it is in Japan. We also have our instrument panel here and some call-outs for the needles and gauges. And there's the paint there as well. And then we got our steering wheel, steering column, our parking brake lever, which goes in here. Then we have the police radio down below. And this thing almost looks like some kind of homing device thing, like Batman would have. But maybe that's because they got this circle here and then they've got a line coming down that says decal. But I do believe this is just the simple police radio. There is also a gear shift lever, which is up here and would go down into this area there. Panel five shows our body to interior attachment. And here we're adding in the rear view mirror just before we put the interior into the body and lock it all in. In panel six, we begin to assemble the body components of our car. And there are the callouts for the optional police package bits. So what we have is the police siren and we have these police lights going on. These would be fog lamps on the front of the bumper. It does say to cut them down a little bit at the bottom. So make sure when you cut that off that you file it flat, just so it all works. So what we have is two clear headlights for each side of the grill, a little decal right in the center, and then we've got the parking lights down below with lenses, which make sure you don't lose those, the optional police fog lamps, the bumper, and then we've got a decal for the emblem, then our body, of course. We've got our side view mirrors, and then our windshield wipers, little antenna dropping in place, as well as door handles. And down below, it says that we have an aluminum license plate, and you can attach a decal to it. Panel 7 is showing the assembly of the rear of the car, and what we have is we've got little parking lamps with lenses again, rear bumpers, our license plate, and then the tail light covers and the tail light bezels all going in place. Now here it says fix it flat and it's pointing to the rear bumpers. So I'm not quite sure what that means exactly, but maybe as we look at the parts, it'll become apparent. Then we've got another aluminum license plate and a decal which goes right into there. Here's instructions on how to attach the chassis to the body. And this chassis has the lock tabs which are always nice. It says first fit the rear of the chassis to the body and then tilt the front in and fit it in. Here we have the body of our Nissan Silvia and you can see that it is quite a neat little car. Got a little gas cap filler tube right here which is interesting and uh, then we've got our vent right up in there. We'll have to remove this little bit of plastic from the windshield of course and file that smooth. But yeah, here it is, little two-door, short little thing. Very, very cool looking. You can see the sunken in area for the door handle. It does look like there's a little bit of flash or a sharp edge around the sides of this. Okay, and then up underneath it looks nice and clean in there. Very good. Little uh, mold, or I guess not a mold mark, but a seam line going up and underneath. Now I don't think anyone's ever going to see that, so you might not need to worry about it. Cool little emblem script right in there. Hard to see on the white. Now here we've got the back of the kit. Looks very much like my 73 Toyota did. And up front, almost... Ah, sorry. Up front, it's almost like like one of the Manta Rays or something like that, a custom car from the 60s. Really pretty cool American custom car, of course, from America. But yeah, overall, a nice small little body and easy to clean up and ready to go when you are. Here we have the undercarriage of our Nissan and all the remnants of it being an electric toy are still in existence. We have an open hole here for an on-off switch and we also have the shortened rear axle. And right in here would be the gear for the electric motor to engage in. Now, 
It is pretty cool though. You do get the engine right there molded in place and the little exhaust pipe. Now it is too bad that it doesn't still have the electric motor and all the rest, but what can you do? This kit would be easy to build over the weekend and display basically without thinking. There's a little triangle here that was the tab that sticks up for the steering just to lock it all in place. Turning it over you can see this big tall area and that is where a single double A battery would be. Oh and it's even got the little hole right there. There's a hole up front here and those are for the little metal tabs that would stick up for your contact points on the battery and then somewhere I guess these little notches up at the top. See that notch there? That would be where the electric wire would be coming out of in order to get your power to the rear engine. Or that could actually be a spot for headlights. And then the wire in the back would be your north and or your positive and negative from the battery, you know, <laughs> little pieces of metal. And uh, that would go onto your engine. Now here it still has the little holder for the back of the engine and on this side would be the front sticking through or maybe yeah because that's the wider end so that would be the front of the engine with the little gear thing sticking out so yeah basically that is still your electric car chassis so if you're able to get the gears and the electric motor you could have this thing running on this parts tree we have the suspension components as well as the interior components and the chassis components. So here we've got our tailpipe and we've got our parking brake, lever, steering column, steering wheel, lower A-arms and then our McPherson struts, that's what they're called. We've got our radio in there, gear shift lever, we also have our instrument panel, um, that is the extension to the exhaust pipe. There's our front tie rods, and this part here, it's kind of molded sideways, so what is that thing? I think that's that weird police radio, whatever it was. And then we've got our interior set up as a tub, and it's got open area down below here, so if you wanted to put figures in, their feet could go right in underneath. Actually, that is very good. <laughs> Some of those... Uh, where the Fujimi figures it should be able to fit into this without any problems. Here we have our chrome parts tree, which is always cool. We've got these amazing wheels sitting here, as well as our emblem and our side view mirrors. We have our windshield wiper, our license plate frame, the taillight bezels, the front bumper, the rear bumper, our grill, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Looks like the gear shift lever, and then those parking lights or whatever those were. And we have our rear view mirror as well. Now turning the grill over, you can see just how nice this is. It almost looks like there would be holes drilled in here for maybe headlights or something like that. And it does look good. Look at those wheels. They sure look like AMT type of things, don't they? Really cool. Now this kit is very easy to build and I think it would make a good parent-child project. And here we have our glass and the headlights and all the little covers for the tail lights and side marker lights and whatnot. And again, really nicely done. Very simplistic, a one-piece glass arrangement. And then our headlights, they have that crosshatch pattern. So make sure you get those sitting north and south, east and west. And just like my illustration here, you want them north, south, east and west on that pattern and not just sticking all over the place. Here's our tires for the kit, and these are nice little Pirelli tires. I do believe they're supposed to be 13 inch radius. That would seem logical at least. I don't know if they'd be 12 inch. But you can see that wonderful looking tread on here, as well as all the raised letters. Pirelli P6. I think that's what it is, or P8 maybe. And uh, you've got even the tire sizes. Oh. Oh, look at that, 185 over 60R13s. So that is what these are. 
really cool. And Pirelli, of course, is the race car tire manufacturer. So putting these on the little police car to try to catch those big old Toyota 2000 GT Super Sports is a good choice. And here we have our two transparent red parts trees. And these would really fit in with the police cruiser more than the standard stock version of the car. There's those wonderful red traffic cones, one of the red police radios. Now, I guess you would paint this up and leave the red panels, you know, sort of thing. And then we've got our siren. Interesting that they molded the base in clear red as well. Now well, my arm is sitting on the packaging. Hold on. Okay. So let's take a look at this. I mean, wow, this is neat. Yeah, there's the police radio, and I do believe... Actually, this is not the police radio. It's the CB. And I do believe this is supposed to be the Motorola microphone. So you might want to take a little wire and coil it up and roll it underneath, just like it would be. And we also have the antenna, which is molded in red, which is a really interesting choice on here. Got a couple of the great red dome lights and the... Oh, that's a uh, megaphone sort of thing. Or maybe that's a police siren. And then we've got the flashing light. Really cool stuff here. Interesting that it's all molded in red. So if you didn't want to build this as a police car, you could also use these parts to represent an American 60s police car, especially the dome. It's not quite the bubblegum type of dome that we had. But it's pretty close. I mean, what the heck? Look at these traffic cones. I like they even have holes in the bottom, so you could screw them into the street or something. I don't know, <laughs> but they are really nice. Oh, those uh, little lights—they're not fog lights; they're actually red siren lights. That almost looks like a side view mirror. Not quite sure the deal on that, but yeah. At any rate, man, this is uh, some cool extra components in here. And yeah, I really like those traffic cones. <laughs> really likes the traffic cones. Recommended. Highly recommended. Get this kit just for those traffic cones. All right, so there is the red components. And now let's move on. Here we have the decal sheet. And they primarily focus on the police options here. And this long banner, it says something along the lines of the Kanagawa Prefectural Police Trafficking Unit. And then down here, we also have more of the same sort of thing. And we've got our Sylvia script, as well as one of the instrument gauges. And I think that's for the police radio, but it looks like a speedometer, actually. It's interesting. And then we also have a bunch of the emblems for Nissan and whatnot. And the scripts on here. And these really interesting license plates. So up top, you have the license plate on white. And then down below, it's on a transparency. And I don't really understand what the reasoning is behind all these uh, Japanese companies printing the license plates like that. I wish I knew more about Japanese license plates, but kind of eludes me as to what's going on. Overall, this decal sheet is really nice looking. And I'll just uh, bring it up closer into the camera so we can have a better look. Here's our decal sheet a little bit closer up, and you can see all the wonderful little emblems and whatnot that are going on here as well as that instrument panel for that, I guess it's not a radio anymore, I guess it's some kind of speedometer. Now just as a little bit of a fun size comparison, here I have an AMT 1965 Malibu wagon as compared to our Nissan Silvia, and you can see just how much smaller the police vehicle here in Japan is as compared to the actual vehicle that could possibly have been some sort of police paddy wagon or something like that back in the 60s in America. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you this amazing Nissan Silvia from 1966. Have you ever built this model kit? If so, how did you like it? Did you find that it was easy to go together or did you want maybe some more detail out of it or something like that? If so, let us know down in the comment section below because I'd really like to know how this went together for you before I build it for me. <laughs> and to build it to show everybody on YouTube, that is. So I really do hope you enjoyed that video, and thank you again for watching. Say, if you really dig these videos, why not click that subscribe button down below? If you become a subscriber, 
Don't forget to click your notification bell, or my notification bell, whatever, and make sure you turn on the notifications on your phone. So, you know, one day you're walking down the street and you hear, and your phone's vibrating like this, ah, right? You can always take a look at that and turn it on and, oh, hey, it's a notification that the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage has another video that just released. Also, you can join our previews, which are really cool to see the video as it's, you know, rolling through and to talk to people in the chat box beside. But if you already are a subscriber, turn on the notifications and all that other stuff, and you want to take that one step further, there is a way that you can really support this channel for as little as $2 a month, 24 in the entire year, taken out monthly, of course, and that is to click the join button down below. And that makes you a member of the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. And as a member, you get your name in the end credits, just like right here. All these great people. Hi, how's it going? Okay, we'll see ya. Yeah, there they go. But your name could be on that list too. And wouldn't that be cool? Because that list shows you that you are supporting the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Also, there's another little bonus to becoming a member, and that is that you get to see a video the moment I upload it. And usually for subscribers, the video will release on Fridays. But as a member, the video releases as soon as YouTube, you know, finishes processing it and all that stuff, and only you get to see it. So that could be like two months in advance of everybody else seeing it as a subscriber. So isn't that cool? You would have the inside edge on that video because you as a member would be the first to see it. So that's a new feature on YouTube, only available to members. So there's another incentive. And if that doesn't grab you, then remember when I was talking a little earlier here about uh, on the premiere videos and you get to type in the chat box and all that? Well, I have four special icons that I created just for members. They're little images or emojis of our Monster Hobbies little mascot here. His name is Peter. Based, the name is based on Peter Laurie. He's a little purple monster with pointed horns. Sometimes you'll see him in like the comments or the um, community tab. I'll uh, post something and put a Peter picture on there. And um, you get four emojis of him that you can use in your comments in that chat box. So you could say, hi, Trevor, how's it going? And use like the Peter emoji with him smiling like, you know, or whatever, right? You can use those four. They're really cool. So those are your benefits of becoming a member. Plus your finances also help this channel so that we can get more cool model kits to unbox like the Sylvia here and all that great stuff. But if you don't want to do any of that, but you want to see another great video, or even if you, you want to do that and see another great video, check out this one right here. I'm sure you will dig it. And if you feel like shopping today and want to help support us through our online store and get a cool model kit shipped to your house, uh, you got to buy it first. <laughs> we'll talk shipping and all the rest. But anyway, click this icon right here and that'll take you to www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, we will see you in the next World Tour Country.